everything about this program has been going up, up, up. So despite a pandemic and all the disruptions, how do you keep the momentum going? Uh, you know, trying to do what we've been doing the past 12 months, really. You know, at, once we got through March and, you know, had to, you know, send everybody home for the remainder of the semester, we were fortunate to get a lot of guys back during the summer months. And uh, we, we've been, just been chopping wood, man. We've been working hard, knock on wood for the most part. We stayed healthy and uh, have been able to be on the floor for an extended period of time. And uh, just getting a lot of the new faces integrated with this group and then, you know, getting our, our veterans, our leaders, uh, you know, to step up and, and take charge has been really good over these the, the fall months. All right, Todd, um, you are the king of analytics. Let's break these two down because uh, they're on our screen. Analytically, how productive are these two? Uh, incredibly, to be honest. You know, I'll start with Jamari. He's uh, one of the most well-rounded guards in the country, you know, in my opinion. And, and one of the things that we've talked about is, is last year in his junior season, he was really able to take on that point guard role and, you know, his ability to handle it, uh, you know, make plays for others and, and do that without turning the ball over was really effective. He's one of the best two point finishers in the country in the backcourt. Uh, shoots around 60% from two and, and was one of the most slippery finishers, I think, in the country. And uh, he's one of those guys that on the defensive end is really productive, you know, for a guard, the way he blocks shots and gets in passing lanes. So. Uh, if he can continue to take that up a notch, I think the sky's the limit for him. And then Khalil, uh, you know, he, he's our instant impact guy last year coming in off the bench. Uh, one of the most efficient scorers in the backcourt. Almost a 50-40-80 a guy. And uh, just a really efficient guy that makes tough shots. And, you know, what we talk about all the time is, hey, you, you can take tough shots if you can make them, if you can be efficient doing them. And Khalil has, has proven to do that over his time here. And one of the great things about Khalil, I think he was fourth in the country in steal rate last year. He's just one of the best disruptive on the ball defenders uh, nationally. And, and these two guys, you know, I, I think have a chance along with Mario Milstead to be one of the best backcourts in the country. All right, so now I'm gonna reverse it. You guys are on the receiving end of all these analytics. What's it like to, to sort of have everything be broken down uh, in the numbers in terms of, uh, you know, the way you play, the way you produce. And I'm curious how much it helps. I mean, the numbers definitely help when you hear from coaches. Um, but for me, I just try to play to my best ability. And whether that's playing defense, offense, driving, shooting, I just want to uh, do what I can to help the team. And that's what I saw it is. It's 50-50 with me because obviously the numbers don't lie. You know, a lot of the stuff that we do as a team is based off numbers. And um, yeah, you know, like when you see the numbers in front of you, like they don't lie. But the other 50 is just like a lot of stuff that helps teams win games, don't show up in the box score or don't show up on, you know, synergy or don't show up here or wherever. So um, it's, it's good to pay attention to it, but it's also good to pay attention to the little things that don't show up on that. So for me, it's 50-50, but I would say the numbers and the analytics are, are, are really big for us. You know, I want to touch on what you guys are dealing with because it is unprecedented. You know, it's not just about what happens on the court because we're seeing like any virus transmission is not happening when you're actually playing the game. It's what happens after. So what kind of responsibility do you two have to make sure your teammates and everyone around this program adhere to what you need to do to make sure that you all have the season that you want? I just think for us, we gotta be safe, obviously, and take precautions. And you can't be uh, too safe on, in the situation. And for me and Khalil, we have to kind of tell our teammates that I know we want to, we're in college and we want to party and do stuff like that. but. It kind of takes a toll on our team and our season. So in order to stay focused and have a season, we should be really uh, cautious. You know, when we're hanging out with each other, you know, just little things like having masks on or like if you go out and about, just make sure you keep your mask on you, you know, make sure you sanitize your hands and just little stuff like that. Because, you know, we're getting real close to the season. If we have a hiccup where somebody catches, you know, COVID or whatever, then they're out for the two weeks or however long it is. And, you know, that could hurt the team. So um, I think now, uh, me and JB are just trying to make sure that we instill responsibility into all the guys and just, you know, accountability. Like if you are going to do something, make sure you're safe about it so it doesn't hurt the team in result. So, uh, yeah, it's just everybody's just doing their own part so that we can all come together and be able to have a have a good season.